So salute those programmas and welcome to the Rampage Cleanup. I am Adolfo the Nerdy Puerto Rican and I am back from my five-week sabbatical. And here with me, as always, is Mikey. Say hello, Mikey. Hello, Cleanup Crew fans. <laughs> and uh, they, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mikey, for uh, for holding the fort down and and, and keeping it going. Uh, so that's uh, it was great uh, to see it. The rampage cleanup has continued on whilst I was doing the things that I was doing. So this is a special rampage uh, cleanup because this rampage it was um uh, it was an actual named event, wasn't it, Mikey? Yes. So this week's rampage, uh, rampage Grand Slam, was part of the Grand Slam week for AEW. We had Dynamite Grand Slam on Wednesday and Rampage Grand Slam. So both events took place from Arthur Ashe Stadium out in New York. New York, New York, it's a wonderful place. Uh, yeah. So uh, this rampage was actually two hours. Um, I ended up only watching the second half. So, uh, Mikey, let's jump right into the first half of uh, this rampage. And let's talk about that uh, Kristen Cage, Luchasaurus, Darby Allen sting match. So what I'm going to do for this first half is because Adolfo has been living his best life on his sabbatical, I'm going to fill him as well as the rest of the audience in of how we got here, because that's the important bit. So as Adolfo said, we started with Christian Cage and Luchasaurus taking on Darby Allen and Sting. So this all kind of stems from pretty much since All Out when Darby and Luchasaurus fought for the TNT Championship. Darby, unfortunately, was unsuccessful, but him and Christian Cage have been going back and forth. So they decided, let's just do a tag team match between Darby and Sting and Christian Cage and Luchasaurus. Honestly, for the first hour of ramp, this two-hour rampage, this was my match of the night for hour one for sure. I think Christian hasn't lost a step. And this delusional heel character that he is presenting is probably one of my favorite things right now going on in AEW in terms of character work. Luchasaurus actually did a lot of the offense in here, too, which was I was surprised with because it's been a hot minute since Luchasaurus has actually gotten to the ring. Darby Allen still doing Darby Allen things. Sting was my MVP in this match because, again, perfect way to still be wrestling at a age that <laughs> Sting is at. Obviously, my move in this match was Sting grabbing Luchasaurus and him and Darby Allen going from the top rope to do a coffin drop into a, st a Sting's stinger, just like pfft, down to Luchasaurus. I mean, Nick Wayne was out there. The only complaint I have, he didn't really add to anything in the match, but potentially Christian Cage might be infesting his mind. Darby Allen and Sting pick up the victory here. This was a fun way to start off this first hour of Rampage Grand Slam. And again, it's going to lead into what happens tonight on Collision because we're getting a triple threat match for yep, the TNT the Championship, threat. which is weird because yep. technically it's a two-on-one. So I'm interested to see how that all pans out. Right. Now, um, I did not get to see, like we had said, I didn't get to see this match. Mikey, does this past match this christian cage luchasaurus darby allen sting match would it set up does it set up does it plant the seeds for the luchasaurus turn on christian cage so i would say that the idea of a turn is there i mean christian cage has been doing most of the talking and he's the one that's been acting like he's the champion so if i had to put my booker hat on I think leading into collision tonight, I think Christian Cage will be the one to win. And so technically he becomes the champion, which will then cause problems between him and Luchasaurus, which I can see that. But I also could see the I honestly don't know. Luchasaurus can retain it. I can also see them giving it to Darby once again. But honestly, this has probably been the most relevant that the TNT championship has been in quite some time. I mean... Don't get me wrong, it was nice to see Wardlow and Samoa Joe have it, but since Luchasaurus got it, and this whole entire feud has been going on between these two and Darby, I think this is probably the most relevant it's been. I honestly have no idea which way it could go. The only way I will know for certain is once the match ends on Collision tonight to see who ends up walking out as champion, but I potentially see the turn there. 
But I think it's going to be a slow burn because I think if Christian gets it, we're going to push it out as far as we can. And Luchasaurus is eventually going to get fed up where these two will fight each other for that title. Right. Yep. That's that's kind of where, where I've been seeing uh, the long game in this so but moving on uh after that we had our mixed trios uh match where we had orange cassidy chris statlander and hook versus daddy magic cool hand cool hand Ange, and uh anna jay listen orange cassidy and hook was a tag team i didn't know i wanted until i got it a couple weeks ago all I need now is for them to throw in Danhausen, and that would be the perfect trio for me. I would love it more so than anything. This match really didn't have much of a build two weeks ago. It was just Orange Cassidy talking to Hook, be like, hey, we should be a tag team. Hook's like, cool. We should have a match at Grand Slam Rampage. Cool. And then it turned out to turn which, into a trio. <laughs> but, right. I'm I like, mean, which, but that's textbook Orange Cassidy. I mean, you know what I mean? Like every every time he's he's gotten someone to to help him, it's, been, it's just kind of been like whoever has been in the locker room be like, "Yo, you want to go do a thing?" Okay, you know. So it's like it's good. So it's it's interesting how we got here because really the build hasn't been like that. But since you've been gone, Adolfo, obviously as you can see, Orange Cassidy is no longer the international champion. Technically, that would go to John Moxley, but on Dynamite Grand Slam through some. Scary concussion protocol that happened in the middle of the match. They're called an audible, and Ray Fenix is your new international champion, taking it off of John Moxley. Yep, saw that. Chris Statlander main evented both Rampage and Collision last week, defending the TBS championship. On Rampage, she defended it against a returning Jade Cargo, who's now off to WWE, now that she's finished up with AEW, allegedly. <laughs> and then... <laughs> On Collision, she defended the title against Britt Baker, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, in her hometown. And I was worried that Chris was losing it there, but she retained it. Chris has been looking strong. She's been defending that title week in, week out. It's been great. And adding her with Hook and Orange Cassidy was great. And I like seeing that Daddy Magic, Cool Hand, Ange, and Anna Jay are still getting to wrestle now that they've defected from the Jericho Appreciation Society since pretty much everyone else did. Yeah. Which we'll talk about Sammy in a little bit when it comes to that. But this was a fun match. I was surprised to see that Daddy Magic and Cool Hand Ange and Anna Jay, those three got a this was pretty evenly matched between offense and defense. And Daddy Magic was actually MVP for me in this match. He did a lot of the offense for his team. But of course, it's Orange Cassidy, Statlander, and Hook. Like, of course they're gonna win. But this was more evenly balanced out than I thought it was going to be. This was a fun match. And just that's going to be my repeating phrase throughout the whole entire Grand Slam Rampage. It was just fun. And if this is how if this is what that we want to book Rampage on a normal basis, I am more OK with that and treating it like a throwaway show where everything else goes when, you know, we just need to progress stuff quickly. But yeah. Orange Cassidy, Chris and Hook take Chris Statlander and Hook take the victory here. This is a fun match. I need more Anna Jay wins underneath my belt because I think she is a phenomenal <laughs> talent, but I'm happy that she wasn't the one to get pinned in this match. Right. Yeah. So then uh, after that, we had a, a bunch of uh, segments. First segment was uh, our the QTV segment. And for any returning Rampage cleanup crew watchers, you know Mikey and Mai's feelings on qtv but go ahead mikey go go ahead so there's an added dimension to this too since you've been gone so qt marshall obviously was not in this segment and the reason why is qt marshall is out here wrestling in the independent circuit but why is he wrestling in the independent circuit you might ask yourself well because a couple weeks ago at triple mania in mexico city for the triple a lucha libre brand qt marshall won the latin <laughs> american championship that match was fire though but that was mm. between that match and the ambulance <laughs> match that he had with penta the week before qt as a wrestler i love but qt marshall is now your latin triple a latin american champion and right now he's going through a phase where he's defeating every luchador and his little literally conquesting them and i was like oh my god this is what we're doing colonizers 
I was like, as soon as I see QT Marshall, I was like, reparations. Oh, wait, wrong right. thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I, in a weird way, like, I'm kind of here for it in the sense that I hope it leads to, like, one of the luchadors, like, taking it off him at down the line. I would love to see it. That'd be great. As far as the actual QT segments, because of that, Johnny TV has kind of taken over as de facto leader. I literally wrote this in my notes and put like a face palm as best as I could <laughs> in my drawings. When when Harley Cameron's like, you want to see my impression of a hot dog? I was like, oh my God, what are we doing? <laughs> I It didn't really progress anything. This is stupid. And it, it never does. They never do. I'm like, again, they Johnny TV do. needs to get out of here as fast as possible. Yeah. I'm like, I hated either, this. Either that or, or rework those QTV segments. Uh, I mean, again, I ha- I haven't, I didn't see this QTV segment, but like before I went on my hiatus, every QTV segment was just wasted space. It, it was wasted minutes that could have been added on to other matches or other better promos, you know? So, but that's that. Uh, then we had another promo uh, where we had Don Callis and Sammy Guevara. Mikey, I just need to ask one question. Yes. Do we have artwork of Sammy Guevara as a centaur and Don Callis riding him shirtless? See, yet. We're, we're not there yet. We still, again... Nothing has changed in terms of the most homoerotic entrance <laughs> in AEW history and probably across all of the weekly television shows. Listen, I know me and JBL talk about how homoerotic Dalton Castle's entrance is on Ring of Honor just because of how fabulous he is, but it works for him. But this homoeroticism of Don Callis riding Konosuke Takeshita as a centaur as part of the entrance <laughs> just... is so Sorry. questionable. It's fine. And since you've been gone, we have gotten more paintings in that same style. First, it was Don Callis beheading Jericho and holding it in front, uh, a la geez. horror movie. And uh, then a couple weeks ago, when we, he revealed what Konosuke Takeshita's and Don Callis' new target is, that being Kota Ibushi, who is the tag team partner of Kenny Omega. And then, you know, Sammy, after losing his match against Chris Jericho at Grand Slam on Wednesday for Dynamite. <sighs> This has been a crazy ride, but essentially, <laughs> honestly, Don starts this, but Sammy is the one that kind of does most of the promo work before Chris Jericho comes in and the brawl breaks out. And I have to say, you know, watching the audience's reaction and everyone booing him because they hated Chris Jericho, I'm like, no, I will not boo this man. I will cheer for Sammy Guevara because we have been saying this for the longest time. Every time Sammy gets a push in AEW, he somehow manages to be put back with Chris Jericho for no apparent reason. So for him to finally be in a feud with Chris and to be outside of the same side of his faction is great. Sammy's like, I don't need the audience's approval. I have a hot wife, which he kind of does in in Ty Mello. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, they're going to have an awesome baby. I was like, shout out to Ty. Yep. So that's going to be great. And he's just going to ruin Chris Jericho's life. And I'm kind of here for that because Chris Jericho has been. Yeah, you know, and if if that's the road uh, that it's leading, uh, you know, before my hiatus, I saw like the beginning of the of the crumbling of the Jericho Appreciation Society. Uh, So it story wise to me. I find it, I find it intriguing, um, you know, to continue to watch this like downfall of, of Chris Jericho, and uh, more importantly, his the those that were under his tutelage uh, being, you know, elevated, like you know, Sammy Guevara. Like I'm, I'm really happy that Sa- that Sammy's finally getting his own uh, his own spots now, uh, like this, you know. Uh, and you're right, I I really hope that they they keep keep it like this that he doesn't go back to chris jericho um i mean to be honest like i would be happy if he broke away from don Callis as well you know and just you know was his was his own thing but uh i'm i'm excited to see how this uh how this story continues to progress uh so then after that we had a segment with kenny omega and chris jericho so you could kind of put this in tandem too so it, with the Sammy Guevara uh, promo, Chris Jericho comes out and a brawl ensues. Then it becomes a two-on-one when 
Takeshita and Sammy beat up Jericho. And who should come out for the save but Kenny Omega, which is crazy because they, Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega in the world of AEW hate each other, but they hate Don Callis more. And essentially, that's what this backstage segment is. We pretty much just get Kenny and Chris Jericho with Alex Marvez talking about how much they don't like Don. And essentially, while we did it, I never get, I never have a confirmation of matches for pay per views until I see like the official card. Yep. But I'm pretty sure this is official, even though we didn't get a card. But for Wrestle Dream, oh God, that is next Sunday. That is crazy to me. <laughs> Wrestle Dream next Sunday, it seems to be Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho, and Kota Ibushi versus Sammy Guevara, Konosuke Takeshita, and whoever Don Callis can find for the third. <laughs> I'm very interested to see. But I'm excited. Listen, I think Kenny continuing to lose at these pay-per-views is probably the funnest thing that I have seen in terms of like he's I wanting Kenny Omega to go spiral and to like lose his mind. And then eventually he gets one up on Don Callis at some point. I would again, this is Wrestle Dream. Anything and everything is possible. I would not be upset if Don would be like, Will Osprey, do you want to have another match on pay-per-view? Right? right. I mean Listen, we're getting Will Ospreay in everywhere. He's about to wrestle at the Impact pay-per-view in October for Bound for Glory. I'm just like, Will Ospreay is out here doing everything, and I'm here for it. I'm excited. Nice. Uh, so then that led us into a uh, fatal four-way uh, between the uh, best friends, uh, the Kingdom, the Righteous, and uh, the Hardys. <sighs> okay, so this is a lot. So let me So let me try to get into this. So obviously... The Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships, and I've said this on across multiple reviews, I have an issue with it being on MJF and Adam Cole because they're not being defended regularly as Tag Team Championships should. Again, I also still feel the same sentiments that Ozzy Open was done dirty when they lost those titles to MJF and Adam Cole on the Zero Hour pre-show for the Wembley show at All In. And I mean, I'm happy to see that we're getting challengers for it. Now, how we got here, really, the kingdom is here because they're part of that black hole storyline with MJF and Adam Cole and Roderick Strawn. So they're here. The Hardys and the Righteous are here because they had a, an interaction over, last week over on Collision in which the Righteous beat up the Hardys when they came out and made their debut. And then they cut a pro, the Righteous cut a promo last week about it. And Best Friends just got it in here because Best Friends. <laughs> So as soon as I saw Best Friends, I was like, oh, they're taking the pin in this one. <laughs> I was like, that's that's all this was. I have to say, this was actually a really fun match. And I am actually really, uh, well, I shouldn't be surprised. Because in hindsight, it really came down between, I think, the Kingdom or the Righteous are going to win. The Righteous do end up getting the victory here. And that tells me that we're not ready to pull the trigger on Kingdom taking those titles quite yet. Do I think the Righteous are going to take the titles off of MJ Cole and MJF and Cole better than you, Bebe? I don't think so, but I wouldn't be surprised if they also got it. I just want, I just want the same wish like I wished for all the, these months, and I finally got at Grand Slam Dynamite. I want the Ring of Honor Championships back, Tag Team Championships back on actual Ring of Honor. Yeah, and now I'm happy that the Ring of Honor main title is now back on ring of honor with eddie kingston beating claudio i'm like finally yeah at least eddie will be on ring of honor defending that thing <laughs> but yeah overall this is a fun match i'm excited to see the righteous take on better than you baby whenever we get that match and i'm also interested because after the match the kingdom beat up best friends for no reason and a temper tantrum for not winning so well, i'm excited to see best friends and kingdom feud for a little bit so overall this is a lot of fun Cool. Sounds like it built some stories. Uh, yeah, with the, with the better than you, baby. Um, you know, I did see the, the the news splash that they had won the Ring of Honor uh, tag team um, from a from a plebis, pleb, blah, 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 from a publicity standpoint. I can see why they would want to do that because I mean, you know, Adam Cole and MJF uh, they have captured the hearts and minds. Of, of the wrestling fans uh so 
you know, to give them a little, so- to, to, to continue that, uh, I guess, instead of giving them the AEW uh, tag team championship, then the next best thing was like, there was the ring of honor. So uh, from, from that standpoint, I can understand, but also I do agree with you. Um, it is frustrating that uh, we don't get that tag team belt defended often, uh, especially now. As a as a new watcher coming into uh, Ring of Honor, I've been watching more uh, Ring of Honor. You know, it's yeah, I want to see the Ring of Honor belts in Ring of Honor, and I want to see them defended. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so then that was that, and then uh, we had a video package for Mike Santana, uh, who's coming back from a really horrendous knee injury. So, uh, go ahead, Mikey. Uh, you seem you seem like you have thoughts. Listen, I will never be against seeing my Puerto Rican wrestlers, especially Santana and Ortiz, now that they're officially back. We'll talk about Ortiz in a little bit because there's been some drama for the last year that these two don't see eye to eye. And it seems that they're going they're headed towards a feud and a series of matches down the line. But I'm happy to see Mike Santana back. And this is the version of Mike Santana of. LAX from Impact Wrestling and TNA. Like, this is the Mike Santana that I love so much. And we'll talk about it when we get to his actual match. But nice. I, I'm just happy to see him back, man. Yeah, uh, you know, his video package uh, definitely got me interested. Um, he's, uh, again, Mike Santana is, is one of these wrestlers that now that I've been getting back into wrestling, apparent it looks like he got injured right before I really started watching uh, AEW. So I, I haven't seen a lot of uh, Mike Santana. So I'm excited to see more of him. Uh, although I fear for his knee, but we can talk about that later. <laughs> uh, so now this leads us into hour two of Rampage, which uh, is where I was able to watch. Um, and our first match was the acclaimed versus the dark order. It was, it was a good match. Uh, you know, I, I have to start off by saying I am so happy seeing Daddy Ass back. Alice and I were at the collision where Daddy Ass took his boots off. And for my whole uh, sabbatical, I had, I, I had no idea what was going on with that. But when, when Daddy Ass took his boots off, at uh, Prudential uh, in New Jersey at that collision, you could feel the collective, uh, the air uh, of the fans. It just like dropped and like, no, you know? So seeing him back with the acclaimed and, and seeing him uh, as a champ, um, that was really, that was really good. Uh, the match was, was good. Uh, you know, we have, we've seen the acclaimed against the dark order before uh, they, they did, they they started the started the show off right started the second half off right uh it was good it had some good uh some good spots um what do you think mikey i agree with you i think this was a really fun way to start the second hour and so this i listen if all the matches that we got for the 2 hour rampage this week I think this one was probably the best built in terms of how we got here because, you know, Dark Order has since the since death before the Ring of Honor death before Dishonor pay per view where they went against the Righteous and their former stablemate Stu Grayson. Now they have this little bit of an edge and they have gone like kind of comedic heel, but still have a serious <laughs> edge to them. Yeah, and so how we got here is that they feel that. The acclaimed and Daddy S are not the epitome of what a trio's champion looks like, spouting ridiculous reasoning. And then we get the match last week on Collision between Anthony Bowens and John Silver. And while right. it wasn't explicitly stated, pretty much if Dark Order wins, they get a shot at these trios championships. That whole entire John Silver promo before the match started was hilarious. Yeah, it's this is like I looked up scissoring on Google. That's not what that means. Don't look it up. Don't look it up. <laughs> so stupid. Yeah. Again, yeah, but- I love it. And then the commentary made me upset because then I forgot. Oh, yeah. 
they reminded me of that the acclaim did eventually win the tag team titles at Grand Slam last year and became tag team champions. And I'm still of the mindset that they should have won it the week before at All Out in Chicago against Keith Lee and Swerve. Mm. Because I was like, oh, this is going to be a squash match. And then they made me believe. And then I was upset when they did not win. I was like, they should have won at the (laughs) (laughs) pay-per-view. But this was a fun match. I I hope this is not the end of Dark Order and the acclaimed and daddy asses feud. Because I think as of right now, Dark Order and the acclaimed and daddy ass are really the only two viable trios they have. And then whenever you decide to bring House of Black, which they're, you know, the acclaimed and daddy ass took the titles from to become trios yep. champions. So whenever you want to put House of Black back in. But they really got to start building up the trios. I mean, technically, we have another trio, but they're champions of a different brand. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> right. Yep. 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 Overall, I love this match. Yeah, it was it was a good match. It was a good match. Um, and then after that, we had Sky Blue versus uh, Julia Hart of uh, Julia Hart of the House of Black. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I want Julia Hart's hat. Me too. I when she was coming down the ramp and the light was like coming through and it was all like, yo, jealous of the hat. That's all I'm saying. Steven, and, I, and I also Steven wonder Nick's if out here I love it. I also wonder if that's the hat that um uh. Who was it? There was there was an interview where Julia Hart said, I, I think it's like Brody King or um um not uh uh the other big guy. Buddy Tell Matthews. Buddy, yeah. Uh either uh Brody King or Buddy Matthews helps to pick out Julia Hart's outfits and like one okay. of those guys picked yes. that hat and I want to know who it was. Okay. I-, <laughs> I could tell you who I could tell you who it was. So um I have said this on multiple occasions, but Brody King inside the ring is very fun to watch, but he's one of my favorite people outside the ring because um, when he was on Renee Paquette's uh, podcast series, uh, oral sessions where she interviewed him, he has become Julia Hart's like on the road, like him and his wife have become like the on the road parents for Julia Hart. And so Mm -hmm. Brody King actually took Julia when she first debuted with House of Black and he said in the interview, like he's he and his wife have taken her shopping for outfits for her wrestling gear. He also he and his friend also helped make her music for her. And so eventually they the King family has essentially become Julia's on the road adoptive family. It's the cutest thing. Yeah, but funny is. enough, so while Brody King has kind of helped Julia evolve the hat, Julia was on a shopping trip with Brody and his wife. She picked it up. She's like, I like this hat. So technically, by proxy, Brody helped her pick it out. But Julia, Julia Hart surprises me, too, in this because she because Brody's like, I was surprised of how gothic and dark this girl actually is. And it goes into a story when we were making her theme music. I asked her, what are your inspiration? I'm thinking she's going to give me some like pop music or things like that. And Julia Hart's like, well, you know, I like Marilyn Manson and Nine Inch Nails. And Brody King just turns and goes, what? <laughs> I was like, Julia Hart is already a favorite. Her entrance, oh, is, her yeah. entrance is a thing of beauty. And I love the intimidation of Brody King walking her down to the ring. And knowing what we know outside of them being the adoptive family for Julia makes it even more in a weird Adams Family-esque gothic like cuteness to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This match rolled. <laughs> yeah, no, and this match, you know, not downplaying this match because this match was good. You know, Sky Blue, uh, uh, rising, another rising star in AEW. Uh, Julia Hart, also a rising star in AEW. Uh, they both put their all in. Uh, I really enjoyed that it was not a squash match. When Julia was coming out, I was afraid that it was going to be a squash match because correct me if I'm wrong, but the last few matches, at least the last two matches that I remember Julia wrestling were squash matches. I know the one was the uh, match where she had to, they kind of pulled it together last minute because uh, I think it was Willow Nightingale had gotten hurt the the night before. So they called Julia up. Um, But I am happy to see Julia is actually wrestling. You know what I mean? Uh, and not um, and not being held to these uh, really short 
squash matches. I want to see more of Julia wrestling the longer matches. Put her up against the Taya Valkyrie. Put her up against the the, the Lady Frost. You know, um, I I mean, and she's undefeated, so she can make a she can make a run if they so choose uh, f- to the uh, women's championship. You know, uh, who uh, Chris Statlander right now, right? Yeah, so Chris, so yeah. Chris is yeah, so it's weird because Chris is the TBS champion, and then your AEW World Women's Champion is Soraya. So okay, okay, right, yes, that's right. Um, but you know, like get Julia after one of these two. You know what I mean? I mean, you have she's technically she currently she's undefeated in twenty twenty three. So that you know, now mind you, she might still not be seasoned enough to to really like grandstand one of those one of those matches uh another reason why i think this sky blue julia hart match was was really good in in julia's development and um you know in in pushing uh sky uh you know like that one the move that julia pulled where uh she was hanging upside down on the turnbuckle and she locked her leg in and then it ended up being like a harun conrada f- you know, where she flipped Sky Blue off. That was that was great. You know, uh, I enjoyed that Sky Blue's aggressive wrestling style. Um, it wasn't just uh, it wasn't just aggressive female wrestler versus aggressive female wrestler because uh, it, it it seems like the um, the female wrestlers that are of like that sky blue Jilly Hart body type, they, they, they try to make them, um, you know, like hamsters on steroids, you know, where they're, uh, where they're jumping off the turnbuckle and like, you know, like kind of like what sky blue was doing was just like winding up and just giving like, you know, the form and form and form and then bouncing off the ropes and all that. I, I enjoyed that Julia Hart had a different style. It was to me, in my unprofessional wrestling opinion, to me, it was almost like an old school Undertaker style, you know, where she was, uh, she was slow and she was prodding and and you know was waiting for Sky Blue to do the move to like counter the move, um, or what have you, uh, you know, um, I, and I I really enjoyed that. I I really enjoyed that. It was two different styles, um, and it was it was a really enjoyable match. It was. And then what makes me more excited is after the match, Julia Hart wins. She decides to put Sky Blue back into the submission again. And Willow Nightingale comes in for the save, which sets up Julia versus Willow tonight on Coalition. I'm like, yep. yep. I'm excited. I, I would I will be happy if if I see Willow cold cock Brody King. Because you saw the way that, that Julia Hart hit behind Brody King. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Um, you know, even... Uh, <sighs> Not to veer too far off topic, but e- even in like WWE, when like uh, when Dom would do something and then hide behind uh, Rhea, like I want someone to tee off on that. You know what I mean? Like if something happens tonight and Julia Hart runs behind Brody King, I want Willow Nightingale to tee off on Brody King. You know, I I like I think that we are at a point in wrestling that we can start having that. You know, where we don't have to have this, oh, you're, you know, I'm a girl, you're a guy, I can't hit you. You're a girl, I'm a guy, I can't hit you, you know? Like, I, I think we're at a point where it's just like, get the, uh, get you know, get the F out the way, get the F out the way, <laughs> boom. You know what I mean? Listen, so, I'm of the mindset, equal rights, equal fights is what I right, say. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Everybody so. can get it. It's, oh, it's yep. so good. Yep. Um, and then after that, we had, uh, San- we had Santana versus Bronson. Um, which was also a good match. Uh, I thought that it was going to be a squash match, uh, when they first started. Um, and it ended up not being, uh, Santana showed a lot of good stuff. I, you know, I have, I have had knee surgery. I, I've had my, uh, my kneecap replaced and I had a rod put down in my tibia and that, that ended my, my professional career at the time. Um, so you know, I I give nothing but kudos to uh, 
wrestlers that come back, especially when they come back from like those knee injuries, um, those back injuries, or those whatnot that require those heavy surgeries uh, that for all intents and purposes for other professions like would put you out. You know, on the flip side of that, every time he like when Santana did that one jump where he jumped back in the ring, uh, where he like he hopped off the, the, the bottom rope and then like jumped back in the ring. Um, and I think he also did um, a somersault uh, maneuver or something like that uh, during the match. Like when I see that, it makes me I'm just like, eh, oh God. you know, because I'm afraid. I'm afraid to see that that injury get reaggravated. Um, so, but it was he. It was good. It was a good match. Um, you know, kept uh, kept me entertained. Uh, what would you think? Again, it had my two favorite things. It had Mike Santana returning to the ring after being gone for almost a year and coming back, and like you said, coming back from a major injury like that and still being able to do what he loves is a fantastic thing. Also, the fact that he got to go against one half of my favorite tag team right now, Iron Savages. Listen, I'm going to send you a picture later. Those are some beefy boys. <laughs> the, <laughs> the trio of Iron Savages and Jack Jameson is a thing of beauty. And I'm going to make you watch their match against Mogul Embassy when they went for the six-man tags. It was high-flying meat. It was great. Lots of but, man meat. I man did. Meat man meat. Yep. I appreciate though that they did give this time. I thought this was essentially going to be a squash match, but they gave it like eight to nine minutes, which I loved. And I knew Mike Santana was going to win, but then the, even the small bit that we got at the end, as Mike was walking back up the ramp, and him and Ortiz were coming face to face, I was like, "Listen, I'm not sure if they have made up yet, but it seems that they're pulling this trigger where Ortiz and Santana are going to be fighting each other." And I'm just like. On the one hand, I hope it doesn't become too much of a shoot fight because I don't want to see violent, real life violence and hatred on my television screen. On the other hand, though, I want to see this kind of hatred and violence on my right. <laughs> well, especially because these two have worked for together for years, like literally decades as a tag team. And just the fact that if we play off of the real life animosity, I think that this has a potential to be a fun feud, but. I hope that they handle it with care and then we don't get a third situation where an actual fight breaks out backstage. Yeah. That's the last thing you need, especially after recent AEW history. Uh, We won't go into that here. Anyway, so moving on. (laughs) Which this finally leads us to the last match of the night. The Hung Bucks versus the Mogul Embassy. I have thoughts but Mike, please go. You you first. Go ahead. So I unfortunately got spoiled by the result of this before I watched Rampage by accident. And it was fine because I had a sneaking suspicion. You don't throw Hangman Page and the Young Bucks in this type of match if they weren't going to win. Especially yeah. since the Mogul Embassy has held these titles for pretty much, I think, 400 and something odd days at this point. They So it was about time and... I, me and JVL has said this in the Ring of Honor reviews. We love Mogul Embassy as champions, but we're ready to see them lose the titles to give way for another trios and just to f- do other stories. I was not expecting it to be the the Hung Bucks, but this match was a lot of fun. I What I really loved is that not only do we get this match, but it basically furthers what I believe will probably be, and I hope is the main event at Wrestle Dream, Swerve versus Hangman, because... Not even two minutes into the match, Swerve's music hits and he comes out and he just stands on the ramp for the majority of the match. Yeah. Now, one of my favorite things that have happened since you've been gone on sabbatical is every time Swerve music hits, just Prince Nana doing anything and everything with the dancing is the best thing on the planet. And that is, I want him and Daniel Garcia to have a dance off. That's all I want to see. But <laughs> this match was brutal in the sense that. Yeah. The Hung Bucks had to bring everything they had. Mogul Embassy, again, just pounds of meat in that ring. Yeah, those are big boys. Holy crap. Every Hit. time I see those, woo, big hitting, boys. Hitting, hitting hard, yep. throwing people hard. That yep. triple like power bomb move that they did towards the end of the match. Intensity, they're just like, like that whole match. Yeah. 
Yeah, totally. It was crazy. One of my other favorite spots is Hangman trying to hit Brian Cage with the buckshot lariat, and then he comes face to face with Swerve, turns around, Brian Cage like literally knocks his lights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that that leads me into my only gripe about the match. And you're right, you don't book a match like this without kind of, without expecting the hung bucks to to come out on top. I just wish it was a different ending because it was an over over glorified, most electrifying move in sports entertainment surprise roll up, you know, uh, and it was such a buzzkill, you know, like okay, so you know, Hangman Adam Page and Swerve Stickland, they're they're facing off, right? I don't I I don't know, like you could have had maybe um, Brian like try to try to hit uh hangman adam page and like he move out of the way and and swerve gets hit you know and then ha- hangman adam page can can jump up and do like a home or something like that off the uh, you know off the turnbuckle or whatever but that just that ending just killed it for me of what was otherwise a very entertaining match you know i i, I just yeah yeah I, and to to be honest when with with the way they built up swerve especially with him and hangman in essence just going like being face to face like that uh i was ex- i was i s- was expecting not expecting but i ca- i saw mogul embassy win you know what i mean um and that didn't happen which was fine i just i wish they would have finished it some other some other way Right. I do agree with you. I do agree that the ending was kind of, oh, okay. That that's what we're doing. It was like, (laughs) exactly. That's what I was like. I was like, oh, in a weird way. Like I wasn't in it. it, It's different because like, I haven't seen the surprise roll up as a finisher in quite some time within the last couple months. In fact, it was, it's been a nice change of pace throughout the whole summer. Not really seeing that as a finisher for most of the time. And I wasn't inherently mad at the ending. I was like, oh, is that how we're ending? And I was like, on the one hand, I was like, oh, I hated it. But then on the other hand, I'm like, you know what? I'm OK with it in the sense because it doesn't make Brian Cage or the uh, rest of Mogul Embassy look weak in defeat because Hangman, ha- the only way that they won was doing the surprise roller because they pulled out pretty much everything in their arsenal and it they would not stay down. Yeah. But again, Hang- the Hung Bucks are now your Ring of Honor World Six Man Tag Team Championships. Yep. yep. Now I'm hoping that they do go to Ring of Honor and defend these things. Um, we have some time between now and the next Ring of Honor pay-per-view uh, final battle, which is usually in December, to build up any challengers. But I hope that they fight. That's all I hope. But yep. th- this was a fun match, but the ending was kind of weird. Yep. Uh, so let's uh, let's do our wrap up real quick. Um, I'll start for the for the one half that I, I did see. I'm, I'm bummed that I didn't get to see uh, the other half. I'm going to have to go and, and actually uh, later on, I'm going to I'm going to see if I can find the first the first hour and, and watch it uh, because I'm interested to see some of those matches. Uh, but the the second half was entertaining, uh, you know, coming back to Rampage. Um, I was not disappointed. Happy. Uh, that there was no squash matches. I was happy that there were no squash matches. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, I I give it um, thumbs up. <laughs> I agree with you. And I feel like they couldn't really put any squash matches given the fact that this was the Grand Slam edition of Rampage. So I think for the most part, all the matches were really well done. And I feel like they... I'm going to be completely honest, and granted, it's not John Moxley and Ray Phoenix's fault, but that between Grand Slam Dynamite and Grand Slam Rampage, there were some unfortunate circumstances that were beyond right. anyone's control in Dynamite, but as an overall show, I preferred Rampage's Grand Slam over Dynamite's this week. Um, I My rating for this, for Rampage Grand Slam, I'm using our one of our new rating systems here as adopted by Luis, our Puerto Rican brother, who has now officially joined us last couple weeks. We are going to use the empanada scale. So out of five empanadas, uh, I give this a solid three out of five empanadas. I think all the matches were great. The promos we did get were fun. Unfortunately, QT Marshall 
and QTV was mm, it, it was QTV. Just it was it. It, was it was QTV. It was QTV. It was QTV. <laughs> It was QTV, and unfortunately, the way that the main event kind of ended was a little bit of a want want. Yeah, but I think this was solid for a rampage. Please, it was rampage like Q- this in the future. That QTV spot was the two-day-old empanada that was made with frozen spinach. Sad, rude, just sad. <laughs> so, all right. Our, uh, our, our peoples, mi gente, thank you for, for watching this Rampage uh, cleanup. And uh, I am Adolfo, the nerdy Puerto Rican. And I am Mikey, the whatever I am here at the Biconics <laughs> and all the other things as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> and and until, uh, until next week, hablamos luego. Laters.